can see recording in progress. I will at the same time uh, switch into English uh, because my co-host today uh, does not speak Danish, at least not yet. So I'm very happy to introduce today's host. Uh, I have with me Pierre van der Meijer. Uh, Pierre is the Managing Director from InfraBridge and myself, Pernille. Uh, I'm the, uh, the Managing Director for SuperOffice here in Denmark. And uh, these pictures were, as I can see, apparently uh, back in the days where we could all uh, still go to the hairdressers. Um, anyway, uh, Pierre and I, we uh, became colleagues back in 2020, uh, where SuperOffice acquired InfraBridge. This was really, you could say, a testament to our strategy of investing in the App Store. So now, uh, when you buy InfraBridge products, you actually buy from SuperOffice and you also therefore get a unified support. So uh, to start off with uh, today's topics, which is apps that can drive usability and efficiency in your super office um, into context, then where does this fit into super office all uh, overall product strategy? Now, our product strategy and roadmap is built upon eight uh, key areas, and two of them uh, is, is subject uh, for today's focus. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, a couple of the apps that are downloadable from our App Store and hopefully address how easy they, it is to use these apps. We're not going to talk specifically about the last green box, but it's just to let you know that our strategy is, is really a key part of our strategy is to enable and empower our partners and customers to build apps and integrations yourselves. Uh, and that is what InfoBridge have done uh, on your behalf and some of these apps is Pierre gonna talk about today. So some of you uh, have heard me make reference to the customer journey in some of our previous webinars where I've mapped touch points with the various phases of the customer journey. Touch points meaning points where there is some kind of interaction exchange in between yourself and your customer, your prospect. That could be exchange of what the customer need, what you can supply, exchange of knowledge, exchange of requests, complaints, ask for help. And this time, the illustration is a little bit different because I've tried to map a couple of examples of apps that could be relevant in some of the different phases of the customer journey. Apps that can, can help digitize the, 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 the touch point as opposed to a manual process and make you so much more uh, informed and effective in your work and at the same time, give the customer, you could say, a much more enhanced experience. And so if you want to talk to me about some of these apps and go into more details, I'm more than happy to do so afterwards. But just before I hand it over to Pierre to focus on the InfoBridge apps that we have promised to talk about today, I would like to just to say in conclusion that, that these apps, uh, in, in my mind, does three key, fee, uh, three, three key things. First of all, they increase your ability to make data-driven decisions. So what, what do I mean? I mean that you can add and integrate data into your super office from other systems and thereby enable you to make much more insightful, um, quick and accurate decisions. The apps does also increase your ability to act with agility. Um, and what I mean by that is that the agility, agility because you can commission and decommission you could say plug on and plug off apps, depending on where you are in your business life cycle and what's important to you and what kind of competitive environment you are competing in. So all in all, apps are really here to enable you to work smarter, more efficient and with much more insight um, that will give your customer a, a better experience of dealing and interacting with you. So with that said, I'm going to hand over the uh, presenter rights to Pierre. Um, and uh, Pierre, um, welcome to the welcome to the to the stage, and and um, please take over. <laughs> you need to unmute yourself, Pierre. Beginner's failure. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to this webinar where I will take you um, to the effective document management in, um, in SuperOffice. But before I start, uh, first of all, very nice uh, to meet you. And thank you for the great introduction, uh, uh, Pernilla. Indeed, we are InfoBridge, part of the SuperOffice group. 
but we are not new. Uh, since 2003, we have been developing add-on products to further enhance the SuperOffice experience. And one of our most known products is, for example, the calendar synchronizer, which takes care of synchronizing your SuperOffice calendar uh, towards uh, Outlook and even on your mobile phone. We are a small group of 12 passionate uh, developers who are constantly working on creating uh, new apps and simplifying work um, inside SuperOffice so you can really focus on the important things. So by just uh, 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 saying this, let me take you to the first topic. Uh, because as you can imagine, we are also working already a long time with SuperOffice. Uh, and not only uh, we are working a long time uh, with SuperOffice, but many customers around us. And I speak to a lot of customers. And when you are working with SuperOffice, you will notice after a while um, that maybe certain things could be better. Um, and for example, an important topic is you want to have focus. When you are working with a customer in SuperOffice on the, the company card, you need focus on certain activities, documents, and emails. Um, if you are using, for example, the sales to register new sales in SuperOffice. Of course, uh, SuperOffice, uh, it is a great tool to register your sales. You can use the dashboards to even uh, see sales uh, funnels, for example. But if you would like to have a little bit more history on a sale, of course, it would be nice that you could see like a little audit trail on what has been happening to a sale until it was closed. And personally, I work a lot in SuperOffice. I work a lot uh, with, with documents. And then especially when working with documents, once something is finalized and I want to communicate with my customer, it would be nice that I could take this Word document and easily convert it to a PDF file because you do not want to send out the raw Word document to a customer. And we have seen these needs, but also other customers around us as well. So we identify, um, we identify a couple of areas in, in SuperOffice where we could help out with one of the InfoBridge add-ons. So most likely you will recognize this when you work with SuperOffice and especially with a customer uh, which already lives long inside your uh, database, the list of activities and documents uh, can get long. Um, so when searching uh, for a particular email or a document, uh, that can take some time. Or if you are managing uh, contracts, for example, uh, contracts which are stored as a regular document, it would be nice that um, maybe a separate archive panel uh, showing you only the documents in a separate panel. Because remember, when you now look at SuperOffice, you got the activity archive where you see your to-dos, appointments, emails, and documents, but it is in a big list. So in the case when you work with contracts, of course it would be nice to have a separate archive panel for it as well. And you might have seen with SuperOffice 9, some new functionality uh, was introduced for grouping and filtering, and that already definitely helps you. But again, um, that filter is only applied to that customer card and applies uh, on all the following companies you are searching for. So what I'm gonna show you, we have created a solution to help you better to, to uh, that you can work better with activities and documents by dividing the activity list in separate archive panels. So you will be able to create new activity archives. These are pre-filtered archives. For example, you can show only certain contracts. You can only show certain activity types. For example, all service visits you have done. So actually they will stand out from the big list in a 
separate window. And we even created some extra archive panels as well. Remember I talked about that you would like to have insights on what has happened to a sale before it was closed. So we opened up a special panel that you can track what has happened to a sale until it was closed. And even there is a panel in there where you can see the upcoming birthdays of your most important contact person, for example, because if you are in a sales relation with a customer and you're calling your good customer and you don't know it's its birthday, eh, that is not a good impression of a CRM system. So it is nice that you are already informed. And you have full flexibility. So you can set up your own filters what you want to display in a separate archive panel. And as an administrator, you can say, no, I want to uh, set these rights for all the users within my super office environment, or you can give users the rights that they can change their own filters. And remember, I talked about working with documents in uh, super office. So when you deal with documents, there is a point where you want to create a second version of a Word document. And maybe how I have done it in the past, if I would need a second version of a document or I would need to create a PDF file. So normally what I would do is I would open up the doc document through SuperOffice, Word will open, I would save the document to my desktop and then uh, create a second version of it or use the Word functionality to save it as a PDF. And once that is done, I would take the document from the desktop and I would re-add that document manually again into SuperOffice. So we even addressed this situation by giving you uh, document tools. So you will be able to select a document line in SuperOffice and just right mouse click it. And then you can say, hey, create a new version or even uh, create a PDF file uh, from it. So I've prepared a little video where you exactly will see the steps I have described in creating extra archive panels and the use of the extra functionality in creating document versioning and creating uh, PDFs. Working with many different activities, certain activities and documents are essential and should stand out. With a panel solution, three new archives are made available directly under the company card. In the visits archive, only the activities from the type visit in and visit out are displayed. All the new archives created with the panel solution share the same functionality as the regular archives from SuperOffice. You can use the right mouse click function for extra options or double click the activity to open. Searching in the new archives can be achieved by clicking the filter button, specify the search type and enter the search criteria. In the email archive, only email activities are listed, making it easy to find a particular email. In the document archive, all different document types are listed. Depending on the settings, the user has access to the configure button to change the preset filter which activity or document type should be listed, or change the current filter. Within a document archive, you get two essential features. Copy an existing document to a new version or create a PDF from an existing document. All this can be achieved by one mouse click. Creating new archives is not limited to the company card. These new archives can also be created on the project card. For example, list all instructions activities for a project in a separate archive. The functionality is also available for the sales card in SuperOffice but you also get access to a special archive, showing you the complete history of all changes made to a sale. This way, you can track any changes made to a sale during the sale process. You don't want to make the mistake of calling your customer and not knowing they are celebrating their birthday. With a panel solution, you can enable an upcoming birthday archive to show the birthdays of your most important contacts. Showing the customer's location on Google Maps directly in SuperOffice is also possible by enabling the Google Maps archive within the panel solution. All right, that's going to do it for this video. So what you have just seen uh, with the panel solution, you are able to divide the long list of activities and documents 
into separate archive tabs. And besides that, you get some extra panels for uh, getting information on the, on the sale history, um, and even the Google Maps panel and the birthday overview. But remember, I talked about how to handle the documents and quick conversion to a second version or convert them to a PDF. But um, once we released this functionality, we got a couple of phone calls from customers and they said to us, hey, Infobridge, great functionality, but we even work a little bit more differently. Because uh, in the scenario that a, a proposal is ready for a customer, you want to send the proposal as a PDF to the customer, of course. But a proposal consists out of actually multiple documents. And not only multiple documents, or uh, sorry, not only multiple Word documents, but it could also mean an Excel sheet and a PowerPoint. So would there be a way to uh, use the multi-select functionality, meaning by selecting multiple document lines in SuperOffice and bundle all these different type of documents to one big PDF file? And that is exactly what is possible. Can you imagine how much, how much time this will save you? Because normally, uh, if you would like to create a PDF for a PowerPoint, you would need to open PowerPoint, uh, save it as a PDF. You need to open up Word, save it as a PDF, but that still leaves you with two PDF files. So with the integrated document tools inside the panel solutions, uh, inside the panel solution, you all get it in uh, one. And uh, I'll, I'll show you how easy it is to do. With the new build functionality, you can select multiple documents. And when clicking the right mouse button, you have the option merge as PDF. I'll show how this works. I select a few different document types. I right click the mouse and choose merge as PDF. In the new dialog, I have a few options. I can remove a document which I select to be merged and I can change the documents order. It's also possible to create a table of contents automatically, and this page will be the first page in the merge document. Let's merge the documents and see the result. The merged PDF document will be available as a document line in the SuperOffice document archive. Once the merging is finished, you can open the document to see the result. The table of contents with page numbering is created, and all different selected document types are converted to one PDF. You see a, a very nice way in quickly converting multiple uh, document types to one big PDF file. And since the end result is directly stored as a PDF in SuperOffice, then if you want to send it to a customer, just right mouse, uh, right mouse click and select the option send as email. What we will do at the end of this webinar, uh, there will be a question uh, round. Um, but since we have done this already uh, a couple of times, I already took the liberty to pre-answer some questions uh, here for you. And maybe this uh, will already uh, help you uh, as well. So one of the questions uh, we got concerning panels from, uh, is it also possible to create these extra archive panels, meaning to divide the activities and documents, under the person card as well in SuperOffice? And the answer is yes. So on every main entity in SuperOffice, and with main entity, I mean the company card, the project card, the sale card, but also the person card, you are able to create these extra panels. Um, another question, uh, what we've heard from, okay, uh, wonderful. We see now, uh, let's say, uh, an extra panel showing only certain documents. I want to add extra columns to it because maybe I want to show the project name as well. Yes, that is also possible because since it is fully integrated in SuperOffice, it takes exactly uh, the columns you have defined in the normal activity overview, that overview or these columns will be also used in these extra panels. So even if you have defined user-defined fields or uh, custom labels in your own language, it will be 
uh, displayed. Um, and the last question we get a lot, um, when people are seeing the movie, they see once a copy has been created of a document or a second version, they see the word copy. Uh, and the question is, can you change that? Yes, you are freely to change whatever prefix should be used on a copied document. Okay, enough said about panels. So you have seen a great way to divide the long list of activities and documents. But in certain cases, you even want to go further. Um, because um, like most people, uh, we are structured uh, human beings. Um, meaning that in certain situations, you want to um, have a fine grain detail on where certain activities or documents belong. And for example, just take a look at your own Outlook. No one has nowadays only the inbox and the sent and the deleted items. People are creating folders and they are creating subfolders to keep really track on uh, the communication workflow. Um, and keeping track on the communication workflow, you can imagine um, that is also very important when you work with projects in SuperOffice. Remember, SuperOffice has the great project module where you have project members and all the activities by different parties are stored under the activity uh, panel under the project, but that list get really long. And especially when you have project members in their own profession, of course, it would be nice if you could build up a folder structure underneath it. And that is exactly what you can achieve with the activity folders solution for SuperOffice. So you will be able to create a folder structure. And by implementing a folder structure directly inside the user interface, it will improve the findability for your colleagues because they don't need to go through the whole list, but they can just look at the folder or subfolder name. So it will really help you to get a better overview and understanding of all activities and documents. So when I look at a few highlights, um, not only activities you can categorize in folders or subfolders, but this also applies to emails and documents. And as you, can, uh, as you can imagine that a folder structure you are applying is not the same for every project or is not the same for every customer. Maybe you want to have a different folder structure for uh, A customers than for C customers. So you can set up templates which you can apply to a certain entity. Remember the entity, the project, super office or the, the project card. And you do not need to do everything manually, meaning when you create a special document, a contract, you do not need to drag it yourself to the right folder, what you're doing right now in Outlook. You can set up that automatically activities and documents are filed to the right folder or subfolder. And you will see it is very easy to work with because it has the same look and feel as Outlook folders or Windows Explorer folders. So in this upcoming short video, um, you will see an example on how activity folders is being used with a customer who is working with uh, a lot of projects. But remember what you will see, it doesn't only work for projects. It works on persons, it works on sales, uh, and of course, under the company card as well. Let's take a look at a project in SuperOffice with a lot of different activities, like visits, phone calls, and documents. The first time when the new activity folders archive is used, the user can manually create the folder structure or select a predefined folder structure that has been created previously. Automatically, the folders are created and the activities, documents, and emails are automatically moved to the right folder based on the activity and document type. Like the folders in Microsoft Outlook, you can navigate through the folders by clicking the folder name, subfolders can be expanded by clicking the little arrow. In the root, activities are placed which are not assigned to specific folders. When using the quick filters, you can quickly filter between documents and activities. 
you can use the drag and drop functionality to move activities and documents to the right folder manually. Searching in the folder tree can be achieved by clicking the filter button, specify the search type, and enter the search criteria. Activities and documents displayed in a folder structure share the same functionality as the regular archives from SuperOffice. You can use the right mouse click function for extra options or double click the activity to open. With documents displayed in a folder you get two essential features. Copy an existing document to a new version or create a PDF from an existing document. All this can be achieved by one mouse click. If the folder tree is very large, you can expand the folder tree to a separate browser tab so you will get a better overview. In the large view it is still possible to move activities and documents to different folders. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. So, you have seen, uh, this gives you really a brand new way in organizing and structuring activities, documents and emails. And again, uh, I gathered some questions uh, we have heard uh, before. Um, one of the questions is, can you also move a subfolder uh, directly to a different folder or do you need to uh, move all the documents manually? Of course, you can move subfolders around just like what you can do in Outlook. Um, there was also another question from a different uh, session. Uh, where one of the participants asked me from, okay, uh, it is clear that you can use a predefined uh, folder list or a folder structure, like a template you can apply. Is it also possible to create uh, directories or folders or subfolders on the fly? Yes. If you have set the rights for certain users, you just right click uh, the folder name and you can create a new folder or a new subfolder. And another question was, um, you have seen the multiple select option uh, for documents. If that is also working inside the activity folder solution, yes, it, uh, uh, yes, it does. Okay. On to the last one, because uh, we are talking about document management and organizing uh, activities, but we've also added a little bonus uh, in this webinar. As you know, uh, SuperOffice CRM is, is the heart of the organization where we store all company data in. Uh, but it all starts, of course, by adding companies um, uh, uh, in the SuperOffice CRM uh, system. So when adding a company, uh, it should go very quickly. And especially when you have a, a salesperson uh, who is on the phone, maybe with a potential customer, um, and most likely he has his phone like this and you want to enter it really uh, quickly. But important, you need good information. So the company name should be uh, correct. The address information uh, should be correct. Very important. So basically we are in the need of adding companies uh, very quickly uh, to SuperOffice and to make sure that we use correct address information. So normally, uh, what you would do uh, when you enter a new company card in SuperOffice, you would take the business card and type in, uh, type over actually the, uh, uh, the information, or you would go to the uh, company webpage, click on the contact uh, uh, page and copy and paste the information over. So what we have done, we have looked at this process and have seen how can we help. So we have seen that people always start with Google. They search on Google for the company name and find out the company details. So we have created Google Places for SuperOffice, a solution which integrates directly inside the SuperOffice user interface, enabling all SuperOffice customers searching in the big database of Google. So you're not limited to only Danish addresses or Dutch addresses. It is a worldwide, uh, worldwide search you're actually doing. And since it is based on Google, fuzzy search is supported. So it means even that you don't know 100% uh, 
uh, how you write the company name or how you spell the company name, you will be still be able to find uh, the company through Google and also meaning through Google Places. So we take information from Google uh, and we made sure that you can use it directly in SuperOffice. But we are using a component from Google, uh, making sure that the address information is correct because every company nowadays makes sure that his company details are listed correctly on Google. So we are tapping into that information and we get that address information, URL information and phone number uh, information. But one thing Google doesn't have is, for example, the organizational number or the VAT number. So for certain countries, we were able to tap in to the official Chamber of Commerce Institute to retrieve extra information for these companies. Um, so I will just show you how easy it is on how to enter new companies in the uh, SuperOffice environment. I want to add the KLM head office to my SuperOffice database. As soon when I start typing the company name, a search is done on the Google servers, and all companies matching my input is displayed in the new drop-down list. When selecting the main KLM office from the list, all the information is automatically added to the company card. Searching with Google Places has the same functionality when using Google in your browser. This means you can find even companies if you misspelled the name, or you add extra information while searching. Besides using the Google database for finding new companies, it is also possible for Norwegian, Danish, and Dutch addresses to use local search providers to give you additional information like the organizational number or chamber of commerce number. Alright, that's going to do it for this video. I guess you, uh, you see yourself how easy and quick it is on how to enter a new company card in SuperOffice. Um, and of course, once we presented this, we also got some uh, questions. So one of the questions is, does it also retrieve contact persons uh, from the company? No, it doesn't. Google doesn't store any information on contact persons. And this is mainly due to the uh, GDPR uh, regulation. So it is company data uh, only. Then we've got also questions uh, like, um, will Google Places work on a Mac? Uh, yes, as you can see, I'm, I'm working on a Mac. So as long when you are using uh, Chrome or any Chromium-based browser, Google Places uh, will work. So that also means on the newest uh, Microsoft uh, browser uh, as well. And another important question is, um, um, having address information by a third party provider is, uh, uh, is pretty much known, but normally you pay per address. When you retrieve an address, you need to pay a certain amount. That is not the case um, with Google Places. Uh, you can do uh, as many searches as you want, and you can add uh, as many companies um, as you want. Um, and therefore, I also put in this slide. Uh, you have seen uh, various solutions, panels, activity folders, and Google, uh, Google Places. And this is the pricing. It is a, a subscription uh, uh, price. And when we look at panels, um, it is a site license. It is 164 Danish crowns uh, a month, and you can do create as many uh, panels as you want, and it doesn't matter how many users you have. When we look at activity folders and Google Places, um, it is priced a little bit differently. It, work, it works on a user, user tier plan, meaning if you have two users, you pay 164 Danish crowns per month. If you have five users, you pay 164 Danish crowns a month. And then, of course, between 6 and 11, the price goes up um, a little bit. Since this presentation will also be shared uh, with you, I have included uh, this slide. The apps you have seen in this webinar, you can try for 30 days. 
And that is the beauty what also Pernilla explained. You can just go to the App Store, you can select the app and you can install it. It will be automatically rolled out in your SuperOffice uh, environment and you can try it for 30 days. There is no local installation or whatsoever. And after 30 days, um, uh, it will automatically stop working. However, if you like the products uh, you have seen and you would like to purchase a subscription, very easy. Contact your SuperOffice account manager and they will arrange that for you. And I can imagine in a webinar, maybe certain things are uh, going very fast. So we have put in this slide a direct link to our YouTube channel where you can uh, re-watch the, uh, the videos also with closed captions in there. And remember, even in your trial period, if you need any help, uh, you can contact support at superoffice.com. And of course, you will be helped in Danish. So from my side, uh, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, attention. And it was a pleasure uh, for me to present to you. Thank you. Pernilla? Thank you, Pierre. So I hope that um, when we started out by saying that we wanted to present a couple of ads that could increase the the uh, the usability and the efficiency of of of, of the user of Super Hoffers, I hope you get a, a sense of flavor of of what that could um, uh, in hold. So thank you very much for your for your attention and your time. I'm just looking in the chat, and it does not seem like we have uh, any questions. So I guess. Um, yeah, your pre-quick questions uh, have answered uh, any questions that there may be. Uh, otherwise, you know where to reach us. So with that, I just want to uh, say thank you for your time and have a, um, a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.